All right, good afternoon. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, bye week was productive and a uh, good mix of getting our developmental guys uh, some much needed work and, and keeping the guys that have been playing in the games in shape and, and also taking some time to rest and recover, which I think is important. Um, we, we uh, in a scrimmage situation, we let our development, developmental guys go three days last week. Players of the week, so you can have the names. I want you all to know who did well. Uh, the standouts, quarterback Jarek Dahey, uh, threw the ball really well. Guy I'm excited about uh, as we move forward with him. Uh, wide receiver Isaiah Esdell, his playing time increased versus Kansas. I think he'll continue to see that. He had a really good bye week as well. Uh, defense bandit Jared Bartlett, uh, guy that we're excited about as he continues to gain weight and grow. Uh, showed some really good rush off the edge uh, last week. D tackle Jalen Thornton, a guy that's playing in the interior. Uh, he was disruptive, made a bunch of plays, and then it's safety Tyke Smith. We got him a lot of reps. He's played. He will continue to play. Uh, we got him a lot of reps last week, and I thought it was big for him. Uh, turn our attention to Texas. Uh, very impressive, impressive team, 11th ranked team in the country, as you all know. Um, Coach Herman in his third year there, uh, and they've done a really good job recruiting. They're long. That's the thing that sticks out to you is their length. They they got really good team speed. Kind of recap, um, you know, each each individual unit. Uh, one of the top special teams in the country. I think they're in the top 10 in special teams efficiency. Um, their punter's off to a great start. Um, he was thinking he was number one punter in the country in 2018 coming out, and he's been very good. And the kicker's been extremely consistent uh, over the last two years, um, mainly touchbacks on kickoff, and he's been really solid on field goals. And their kickoff re returner is their, is their leading receiver. Uh, they've returned one kickoff for a touchdown, and they're a threat in that game. Offensively, uh, one of the best offenses in the country. Uh, they've got big numbers. Total offense, they're, they're right up there. Scoring offense, they're right up there. Well over 40 points a game. Uh, starts with, with Ellinger, the, the quarterback. He, he's a Heisman Trophy. I talked about him yesterday on the conference call. I think he's special. He's a tough kid. I think he's improved his passing ability. Uh, he's been extremely accurate this far. Uh, he's a tough tackle. They usually, uh, he's a dual threat guy. They use him in the run game as well. And uh, he's really tough to get down. And I think his personality is what that team is really taking. Is he's a tough, he's a tough guy. He's a winner. Um, obviously, you can tell by watching him. He, he loves everything that, that Texas represents. They're extremely talented at wide receiver. Uh, uh, Duvernay, du, I, I'll butcher that name, but number six, he's a player. All right, he got 39 receptions through four games. I mean, that's difficult to do. Um, I think he's right at the top of the country uh, at that. Uh, Colin Johnson, it sounds like he may be back this week. He's a big play threat. He's been solid over his previous two years there. Um, you know, well over 6'5". Uh, has an opportunity to you know, go and post deep balls. He's won a lot of one-on-ones, and he's a really good player. And I think their their offensive line is playing at a high level. Uh, Herb Hand does a nice job with the, with the offensive line. I think those guys are playing at a high level. Uh, defensively, very multiple. Uh, base out of three down front, uh, really heavy. You know, all of them 290 or better on the on the defensive line. Uh, really, secondary wise, give you a ton of different looks. Uh, try to confuse the quarterback. Um, they play a lot, a uh, lot of different guys. I know they they've had some injuries there, but they've got a lot of depth. And and I can't tell a whole lot of difference between uh, when they put their ones in, or their difference between their ones and their twos. I think they're really talented. Uh, a lot of team speed, especially at linebacker and in the secondary. And uh, they play a bunch of guys. They stay fresh. Uh, they play some really good offensive football teams, uh, LSU and, and Oklahoma State, and I think they've done a really nice job. Um, so wrapping up, I think it's a big game. Obviously, it's a 3.30 nationally televised game. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Strike the stadium. I look forward to see that. We're going to need our crowd. Uh, we're going to need our students. I hope, I hope they, they, they show up in big numbers and I hope they stay. We're going to need them. The atmosphere, the home field atmosphere, uh, advantage uh, needs to be big. I think it, it, it's, it's important for us this week. Uh, also recognizing the, the 50th anniversary of the 1969 Peach Bowl team, 10 and 1 team. I think Coach Bowden's going to be here, so that, that's going to be a, a big deal. Looking forward to meeting some of those guys on Friday night in, in front of the game. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Neil, offensively, their scheme, unique from what you've seen this year is the how are quarterback run stuff so different that it makes them completely unique? Well, I think what they do is they've got they've got a good mix of the quarterback run game with they take shots. You know that's something that, that they've done a really good job of. 
not only this year through four games, but last year as well, is they take shots down the field and they hit those shots. Um, so I think they're really good. I think they're the best offense we played. Um, schematically, are they doing a bunch of different things? Um, I don't know if they're, they're much different than some of the other, um, as far as the type of plays they run, than some of the other spread teams we've played. But I think from an efficiency standpoint and being able to threaten you sideline to sideline and in the deep is, is I think, they're unique. How do you um, plan for all of the unknowns with injuries? Do you just go into it in terms of them? Do you just go into it and say, well, we're going to figure on them playing and playing that way? Or how do you go about that? Well, I think they're so talented on defense. Yeah. And uh, I think Tommy made a comment of it yesterday. He felt confident in those guys, and, and understandably so. They play a bunch of guys. Even when everybody was healthy, they played a bunch of guys. Um, I can't tell a whole bunch of difference um, between the units. Um, I know this, when we line up and play, there's going to be some really good guys in the secondary. Who it's going to be, I don't really know, but I know they're going to be good players. When you've got talented guys, mm -hmm. obviously, that are going to be playing, but maybe not experienced on their end, do you get, are you going to try to do more maybe RPO or deception stuff to yeah. see if you can test them? Well, it's inexperienced versus inexperienced. So it's uh, no. I, I think what we what we're gonna do, same thing we try to do over the last few weeks, is is try to put our guys in the best case, our best possible scenario. Um, try to put our guys, uh, especially our quarterback, in a situation where um, understanding what what's going to happen pre-snap, and then giving him some quick, concise reads. Um, our guys got to do a good job. At some point, they do a really good job mixing up coverage. At some point, they're gonna they're gonna play man, and we've got to do a really good job of getting getting those guys hands off and winning those battles. I think any of these big tight games, okay, and they're all big at this point, we're in, we're in the Big 12 play, but it comes down to a bunch of individual one-on-one -on -one battles and we've got to win our share to have, to have success in this game. When you see a team that uses multiple fronts, do you try to keep things simple for your guys to, to handle that with all the different looks they give you? Yeah, we've been pretty simple as far as schematically what we're doing run game wise. We try to present it a bunch of different ways. We'll try to, we'll try to do that again this week. Um, but yeah, they do a really good job. The, the, the difference in them compared to some other teams we play is they bounce around fronts, um, and, and they and they run a bunch of D linemen in, and they're big. You know, they've got they've got a size advantage across the board uh, versus us. It looks it looks like college football and even the NFL today, you're seeing more and more of these kind of quarterbacks uh, that yeah being strong and can run. Uh, you might have three of them in a row coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what does that do to you, and and, and, and you how do you handle that? Well, I think what it does is, um, and we played a couple so far this year. You know, um, Kelly Bryan is really good at that too. He's a really great guy. And there are there are a lot of them in college football, and they and they put you in a bind because they throw up, they throw the ball well enough that you got to cover everything. But they also uh, they have the ability to make a play when it breaks down, and that's probably the scariest thing. Um, is he does a great job. If you do if if you do a quality job in the secondary to cover your guys. You know, he does a great job of, of breaking containment and running. And then when he scrambles, he can also find the open guy. So it, it's tough. You know, we've got several of them in our league. And so we've got to do as good a job. I don't think you go into the game, go into the game understanding you're not necessarily going to shut them down, but you got to limit the explosive plays. That's the biggest thing. Those explosive plays on your part, you talked a lot about needing that. Is it, how do you manufacture that? Or is it just. I think it goes down to the one on ones. You know, we've got to be able to win those. We've got to be able to throw the ball um, down there. We've got to be able to make some people miss in the open field in the run game. And we've got to generate some explosive plays. Uh, you know, um, when you're playing this type of offense that's, that has the ability to put a lot of points on the board, you got to go into it understanding that, hey, you're going to make some big plays. And that doesn't necessarily mean you got to throw the ball 50 yards down the field. What it does is it means that you got to be able to break tackles, right? You've got to be able to – get north and south when you're running after the catch. Um, and then those are some things that we've got to do to keep the chains moving. Is that something you keep trying to do until you get it, until it pops? Yeah, so that's something that we, that was a big point of emphasis during the bye week. Um, you know, I don't know if that's something that necessarily just happens overnight. I think it's something that gradually takes place. Um, but that's something really going back um, when we had an issue with it in Missouri, that's something that we put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and we've gotten better running after the catch. We've gotten better breaking tackles. We're not as good as we need to be, but we've made improvements on it. The receiver, Duvernay, that you mentioned, seems like he's really turned into one of their favorite targets, a guy that I like to go to on third down. What have you seen yeah. out of him that's made him so well, successful? 
Duvernay, that's how you say it, and I, and I actually got that written down and I didn't do a very good job following my notes. But, uh, but do, you know, here's what I think, is he's a guy that's been in the program for a while. So when you watch him play, he's really heady, okay, and they move him around a bunch of different spots. Um, I think he's got a real good feel for just football in general. You know, if we weren't playing this week, I'd like to watch him play. You know, because he does a really good job of kind of settling in zones. He understands when it's man. He runs away from man coverage. He catches the ball just like I was talking about. Our guys need him to. He catches and he gets vertical. Has ability to make a make a guy miss. Um, and like I said, his and they've done a great job getting him the ball too. Uh, especially when they had some of the other guys out. They really focused on him. And I mean, you had 39 catches through four games with the yardage he's put up. I think that's 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 great production. Do you prefer to have a big game like this? Uh, early in conference play or later, or does it not matter? I mean, I think at this point, I mean, y'all watched them. Uh, you watched most of the teams in our league. I think, you know, week in, week out, we're going to have some big games. You know, against playing these quality opponents. You know, our month of our month of October. You know, I haven't looked much ahead, of, but our month of October, you know, we're going to play some really good football teams. It starts this week with, with Texas. I mean, they're talented, and I think that's what we're going to see as we continue through our league. Yes, guys. Um, I think one of what I did last week you said that. Often done a good job in RPO game of taking guys out of the box. Mm -hmm. And just from a layman's perspective, if he doesn't run it, he doesn't keep it, he's not like Elliot for sure, but he's doing some stuff to manipulate that. What yeah. he's actually doing there? And, and, and I think the last two weeks, too, against <laughs> NC State, he pulled a couple, and then against Kansas, he had a couple of really positive plays pulling the, pulling the ball. Um, and, he, and he has done a good job in the RPO game. Probably better against NC State than he did against Kansas. Um, but you got to you, you know, to prevent guys from below the box, you got to be able to either run the ball at quarterback, or you got to be able to get the ball outside. You know, it's one of the two answers. And um, he's done a good job RPO wise. I think that uh, he's an effective runner. I think he's a better athlete than, than probably what he gets credit for. Um, the run he had versus Kansas was really good. He, made, he kind of made a guy miss and got the side on there for a ten plus game. I think he did it twice actually, um, but. That's what, when you make throws in the, in the RPO game, then they can't necessarily crowd the box on them. That makes sense. They have to re represent, or they have to, they have to cover you and move more people. They have to play, you know, multiple safeties. You mentioned their size, and they've got impressive size. Specifically, in middle linebacker, too, they got a 250 pounds mm -hmm. in there. How do you, what, what are some of the things you can do when you're dealing with teams that are bigger than you like that across the board? Yeah, well, I, I think that, First of all, you, it's not something you talk about a whole lot with your guys. Yeah. And it is what it is. Um, they use the linebacker a lot to blitz. He's an effective blitzer. Um, but they are. They've got a good size. You know, they, like I said, they recruited really well. You know, they, um, Texas high school football is some of the best in the country. And they've done a really good job of, of picking and choosing the guys that fit their schemes. They're long. I think not only are they are they heavy, but they're long. You know, And the length really causes you more issue than, the, than maybe the girth or whatever. Um, but I think what you do is you, you have a plan, and, and really what you want to do is you want to make sure your big guys are on their big guys. And that's what you got to that's what you got to make sure you scheme against. Yeah. Coach, how has uh, Van Darius looked since you know, mm -hmm. you've been coaching him? And having, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think, our, I think our expectations have to be reasonable for him. Uh, he had played the football game in well over two years. Um, and when he was out of Alabama, he played some special teams, played a little bit of defense, there, I think, toward the end of his career there, but not a whole lot. So. Um, in a lot of ways, it's going to be his first college football game. Um, he'll play some on defense. He'll play some on special teams. Um, we've kind of, over the last two to three weeks, we've kind of started getting him reps with the first group. He got a ton of reps uh, last week during our bye week. Um, so he's going to be ready to play. He's excited about playing. Um, but I think we, our expectations have to be reasonable, and ours as coaches are. Um, and, but he, he's done a good job. Proud of him to this point. Uh, look forward to watching him see how he does in game game type settings. You've mentioned a couple of times about him the play catch up in the recruiting game. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you are now and are you to the point where you and your staff feel comfortable selling things specific yeah. to you talking about in the twenty class? Well twenty and twenty one yeah. just all I think twenty one will be our first um, real recruiting class, you know, when I'm talking about from a time perspective where we're not playing catch up. Um, because recruiting now is two plus years, and I think the 21 class will be the first class that um, that we've gone through the whole time with. Okay, um, I like the way our 20 class is coming together. Uh, I think we'll have, you know, we'll have we'll make some movement here in the next couple weeks. 
Um, I think that the guys we, we have committed, I like them. I think they're proving that they're playing at a high level right now. So I like those guys. We got to we got to finish strong. I think we I think we're setting ourselves up for a strong finish in December into February. Um, and I'm excited. We got a ton of 21 kids coming to this game, and so it's another reason why I think the the, the atmosphere needs to be. At a, at a great level on Saturday because we're going to have some of our, not only our 20 guys, but our 21 guys here. So hopefully a lot of future Mountaineers in the house. Do you have any thoughts on the California law about players? No. I was waiting. I was, I was surprised it took this long. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'll do. I'll just, I, I can sit up here and give you a bunch of mumbo jumbo. The bottom line is I really don't have an opinion on it. Um, and y'all heard, y'all asked me a little, like a bunch of questions like this. And my, and my deal is the same. Like, I just want to know the rules. Some of the rules will abide by them, but like, I'm not into like making legislation. That's boring. I get it. Um, but honestly, I've been trying to figure out how we're gonna get some first downs. So I like, I haven't really thought about um, what the, what the California legislature's done. I know y'all had some interesting takes on Twitter. I saw that. All right, Andy Staples been talking about it nonstop. I had to just like hit my Twitter button. <laughs> Since you started talking, Pennsylvania's apparently. Got to introduce them. Are they? I'm sure we live in a copycat society. I'm sure that it'll take. But I really, I, I really don't have any thoughts on it. I'm not educated enough on the bill to even to be able to talk about it. After how last year game went down and the juice that those guys have to bring you, you get a hold over guys I'm talking about. Are you sensing anything? I mean, you never have to get guys up for taxes, mm -hmm. but the hold over from last year's team, do you sense anything special from those guys? Yeah. First game? Well, I think that. I think coming off a of bye week, anytime you're going to play, you have play in a couple of weeks. I think there's going to be excitement. I think we'll have great energy at practice today. I don't think we'll have any problem trying to motivate them and get them ready to play. Um, we got a lot of guys to play in that game. Not a lot of guys that necessarily play vital roles in that game. Um, so um, for most of our guys, outside a few defense guys and Colton, this is going to be their first real action versus Texas. So um, honestly, we're, we're, we're not making a – once you get into Big 12, I'll treat these. I'll treat them all the same. This is a big one because this is the one we play this week. Um, they have to be ranked number 11 in the country. Uh, West Virginia had a big win against them last year, um, but I don't think that'll have any bearing whatsoever um, when we line up and kick this thing off on Saturday. For whatever reason, fans have really latched on to this matchup. Have you gotten that sense just since you've come here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know the reason I have played in the game. You know, I played Texas before, but I haven't been here and played Texas, so. Um, I do get the feeling on that. I'm not sure why. You know what I mean? Like I just haven't been here, so I don't. And I'm not trying to evade anything. I just have played the game, but I do feel like this is this is one that, that our fans, you know, are excited about, and it's one they talk about in the off season as well. I'm curious about them schematically. Um, mm -hmm. Their B linebacker, I guess number 46. Is that tip off what they're going to be? Whether a three or four man front? Is that what you look for there? No, nah, they're really. What they're doing is they're getting their rover. Okay. So a few teams across the country they're doing it's kind of um, Clemson's doing it right now. Um, Iowa State's been doing it. Uh, they're doing it. Texas is doing it. They've got a rover that um, 